graph sketching. I go on about it all the time. And it's a concept which normally students aren't so great with when it comes to uh, the first time they're coming across it. But it's something that you need to be quite strong at if you're going to do well in the Oxford and Cambridge interviews. If you don't know who I am, I'm Jamin. I study maths at the University of Oxford. And now I help students all across the globe who are looking to do the same get in. Now here is a really, really interesting graph which we're going to be aiming to sketch in this video. This was actually shared with me with one of my students and uh, I thought it was a really interesting one because it's, it looks very close to tan of either 4x or 3x but it's neither of those uh, functions. So it's a very interesting looking graph. Anyway, I encourage you to pause the video now and try and sketch this graph and again, try, like I say in all my videos, try and sketch it as if you were in an interview explaining your thought process along the way. And I'm going to be showing you how I would explain this if this problem was given to me in an Oxford or Cambridge maths interview. Let's get started. <clears throat> okay, so the first things I'm noticing is a very interesting looking graph here. And generally when I like to sketch graphs, there are a few things I like to consider. The perhaps the domain of this function, if it has any symmetry or periodicity. And then also once I've done that, I like to consider things like the intercepts turning points and asymptotes. So I'm going to start by considering the domain here. I notice that this is going to be defined for most values of x except potentially when this denominator is 0. So that will be maybe when 3x is like pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2, things like that. So I just have to be careful there. In terms of symmetry, well I notice that this function here is an odd function. So if I just call this maybe f of x, for the time being, I notice that f of negative x equals sine of minus 4x over cosine of minus 3x, which is the same uh, because sine is an odd function. I can bring out the minus sign there. Negative sine of 4x over, and then since cosine is even, that's going to be cosine of 3x. And that's the same with negative f of x. And that tells me that f is an odd function. And this is quite useful because that means when I sketch this graph, I actually only need to sketch the graph for positive values of x, and then I can just rotate the graph 180 degrees about the origin. Okay, cool. And I also notice that this graph for sure will have some, period, uh, some periodicity. It will be a periodic function. What that period is is not immediately obvious, but I can see that 2 pi for sure will be a period of the function because f of x plus 2 pi is going to be sine of 4x plus 8 pi over cosine of 3x plus 6 pi. And since sine and cosine have periods of 2 pi, I know that sine of 4x plus 8 pi is going to be, like I can kind of subtract 2 pi from the argument as many times as I want. So that will be the same as sine of 4x. And similarly on the denominator, cosine of 3x plus 6 pi will be the same as cosine of 3x, which is the same as f of x. So I don't know if this is necessarily the minimum period, but this is certainly a period of this function, which is also very useful for sketching this because now it means I only need to sketch this graph between 0 and 2 pi, and then I can just copy and paste that graph um, for all values of x thereafter. Okay, so in fact, let me sketch up some axes here. So I've got 0 here and 2 pi here, and I'll just rewrite the function we're trying to sketch here. Sine of 4x over cosine is 3x. Okay, wonderful. So let me think about the intercepts now. So the intercepts, uh, the, so the x and y intercepts that this graph has. So when x is 0, y is going to be sine of 0 divided by cosine of 0. So 0 divided by 1, that is 0. So if I just change my color here, I know it's going to pass through the origin here. And what would the x intercepts be? Well, I need sine of 4x to be 0 for this to happen. So if I just, uh, let me move this across here. Hopefully you can see everything still. So for the x-intercepts, I need sine of 4x to be 0. And so that would mean when 4 of x, uh, four x sorry, is a multiple of pi. So x is n pi over 4. Now, I'm just going to be a bit hesitant about this because I notice that we're dividing by cosine of 3x. And now for most values, if I'm doing 0 divided by something, that will normally be nice and easy to work out. 0 divided by 5 is 0. 0 divided by 0 0.23 is 0. But if I do 0 divided by 0, I could potentially have some issues. Uh, maybe it's not defined. Maybe I get an asymptote. Maybe it does approach something and I need to work that out. 
So what I should also be careful of is even though I'm saying the x-intercepts are going to be n pi over 4, that's going to be only true if the denominator is not 0 as well. So I need to ensure that the denominator is not 0. If the denominator is 0, I've got to take that into consideration. So let's just list out n, the values of n pi over 4 between 0 and 2 pi. So that's obviously 0, pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, which is 5. Uh, which is pi, sorry, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, oh, which is 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, and then 8 pi over 4, which is 2 pi, like so. And so those are my potential roots. Most of them, I think, will be roots. I've just got to think about when cosine of 3x is 0. So I'll write that down here. Oops, sorry about that. So cosine of 3x is 0. That's going to be if and only if, well x is going to be, well, so I know that cosine of theta is going to be 0 and theta is pi over 2, so that would make x pi over 6. The next root would be uh, when theta is 3 pi over 2, so that would give me pi over 2. So just to clarify what I'm doing here, cosine of theta equals 0 uh, for positive values of theta if theta is pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, like an odd multiple of pi over 2 and so on. So if I keep going until I get uh, in this list here, so pi over 6, pi over 2, 5 pi over 2 divided by 3, that's going to give me 5 pi over 6, then 7 pi over 6, then 9 pi over 6, which is the same as 3 pi over 2, then I'm going to get 11 pi over 6, like so, and that's just beneath 2 pi. So 11 pi over 6, slightly less than 2 pi, to the next one, which would be 13 pi over 6, which is just outside our interval. So those are going to be the values of x where the denominator is 0, and I can actually see that there is some overlap here. So I've got pi over 2 and pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And the other values, these for sure, will give me asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, because I'm got a, I've got on the numerator something that isn't 0, and then I'm dividing it by something that is 0 or is approaching 0. So I'll definitely have an asymptote there. So let me maybe mark those on. So if I put pi in the middle here, We've got pi over 2 there, 3 pi over 2 here, and then, so this would be pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. And if I mark on the asymptotes, I'll use a different colour here. For this, so we've got 1 at pi over 6, which is maybe roughly there, and so this, I'll just mark this here, x is pi over 6. We've got another asymptote at 5 pi over 6, which is just going to be slightly less than pi. Maybe there. And then one on the other side of pi at 7 pi over 6. And then one at 11 pi over 6, like so. Okay, cool. So those give me my asymptotes for this graph. And I know that it has x-intercepts at 0, pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, pi, 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and 2 pi because I've got zero on the numerator and something that isn't zero on the denominator. So I know it's going to have a root at the origin, which we've already marked on, at pi over 4. Uh, potentially at pi over 2, we don't know yet, but 3 pi over 4 we can mark on a root there. At pi we can mark on a root at 5 pi over 4. 3 pi over 2 we don't know yet, 7 pi over 4, and 2 pi. So it's got roots there. Okay, so this is starting to come together. I guess what I need to consider now is what happens at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So for this, I'm just going to scroll down a bit. Let's start with pi over 2. We need to consider the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of sine of 4x over cosine of 3x. And now, this is a function where if I plug in pi over 2 on the numerator and in the denominator, I get 0 and 0, which is screaming out to me to use L'Hopital's rule, which says that because we have this, we can differentiate the top and the bottom, and this should equal the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of 4 cosine of 4x over minus 3 sine of 3x, provided this limit exists. And thankfully it does. If we plug in pi over 2 here, 4 times pi over 2 is 2 pi, 4 times cos of uh, 2 pi is 4 times 1, so we get 4 divided by minus 3 times sine of 3 pi over 2, which is minus 3 times minus 1. And so this will approach 4 thirds. So when x approaches pi over 2, y is going to approach 4 thirds. So something like this. Now, 
it's a bit weird because at pi over 2, we're, the function itself is not defined, but it's continuous on both sides. So I don't know exactly what this graph will look like, but it will basically just have a little hole there at x equals 4 thirds, uh, sorry, x equals pi over 2 and y equals 4 thirds. And now if I do something similar with x approaching pi over t uh, 3 pi over 2, uh, sine of 4x, oops, over cosine 3x, again I can use L'Hopital's rule to help me. So according to L'Hopital's rule, this is going to be the limit as x approaches 3 pi over 2 of 4 cos 4x over minus 3 sine 3x. Now when you plug in 3 pi over 2 here, 4 times 3 pi over 2, that's 6 pi. 4 times cosine of 6 pi is 4. And then on the bottom we're going to get minus 3 times 1, so minus 3. So that's going to be negative 4 thirds. So we know that the graph will pass through, or not pass through, but have like a weird similar thing here with a hole over here at 3 pi over 2, like so. So we've got quite a lot of information when it comes to this graph. I guess the other thing that I might want to consider is just the behavior as we uh, get near these asymptotes. So if I look at x equals pi over 6, so maybe I'll just do this on the side over here. So if I have x approaching pi over 6 from the negative side, we have y is going to approach, well, it's sine of 4 times pi over 6, which is just 2 pi over 3, over cosine of 3 times pi over 6, so pi over 2, but from the negative side. And the idea here is cosine of pi over 2 is obviously 0, but we're approaching it from pi over 2. So, sorry, this argument is, is just slightly less than pi over 2. So we know that if you think about the cosine graph, cosine of something that's slightly less than pi over 2 is going to be slightly positive. So we've got positive divided by positive, so this is going to approach infinity. So I know that the graph will look something like this. So it's going to approach infinity as you go from that side. And then similarly, if we look at the other side, so as x approaches pi over 6 from the other side, we get y approaches, well, the numerator will still be sine of 2 pi over 3, which is just a fixed positive constant. In fact, that's what root 3 over 2. But now the denominator is going to approach 0, but from the other side. And so this is going to approach negative infinity. So our graph will start from there on the other side of pi over 6. Okay, cool. And what I suspect will happen is we're going to get something like this. I'm not going to lock this in just yet, but just to give you an idea of where I think this is going, I think our graph is going to look something like this. And then uh, maybe it will come back uh, down from here. Yeah, something like this is it at least what I oops, sorry, expect it to look like. Now, of course, this, the, there's obviously some silly things that could potentially happen here. So like here, between pi over 4 and pi over 2, it could, in theory, do something silly like that. Who knows? But it feels like that, that won't be the case. I guess... For sure, I do know that between pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4, since the graph is essentially continuous, of course it's got a small hole here, but we can, for all intents and purposes, ignore that because we know the graph is continuous around that point. So we may as well just define the function there as uh, the, the y value being 4 thirds. But by Rolle's theorem, I do know that there will be a turning point between pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. And I suspect because of all the symmetry we've got going on, it's probably at pi over 2. But if you wanted me to, I could try and find the turning points uh, of this graph. However, I feel that that might be a bit fiddly just because we've got sine of 4x and cosine of 3x going on. So it may be a bit difficult to match up the arguments. And perhaps at this stage, the interviewer would tell you, yeah, let's try and work out the turning points. Or no, there's no need. And I'm just going to assume they say no need because the sketch was basically what I had a second ago. So something like this here. And you can either verify this by showing that there are turning points at pi over 2 and uh, that the other one would be at 3 pi over 2. Um, but, sorry, I'm just going to sketch this out first. It essentially looks like this. And that's what it looks like between 0 and 2 pi. And then, as I said before, to get for all values of x, you can just copy and paste this across because the graph is periodic. Or you can just copy and paste it for positive values of x and then rotate it around. 180 degrees around the origin because it's an odd function. But that is how you would sketch this graph. So it's a very interesting graph. And when this was given to me by my student, I was, uh, it, it, it was an interesting one. It caught me a bit off guard because it looks so, so much like tan, but it's not tan. 
and you get this very interesting behavior. We get these points in the graph where the function is not defined, but it may as well be defined there. Anyway, hopefully that helps you. And if hopefully you've received your invite to interview, I know Oxford are being a bit slow. So if you've applied for Oxford, you'll hopefully hear in the next few days. But best of luck, let me know in the comments down below if you have. And also let me know what videos you'd like to see me. Because obviously I'm here to help you as much as I possibly can in terms of preparing for the interviews. You know what you need to work, <coughs> you know what you need to work on better than I do. So let me know and I'll try my best to help you. Anyway, I'll leave another video on screen where I solve another graph sketching problem so you can start to build an idea of what skills are required, the things you need to say when answering these sorts of problems. I'll see you over there.